Well, Tony Hale, we want to talk to you about both Veep and Arrested Development today, yeah, but let's yeah. start with Veep. Um, you play Gary Walsh on there. I do. And he works for uh, the vice president, who is played mm -hmm. by Julia Louis-Dreyfus. Yeah. What was it, what's it like working with her? I think she's one of the top four or five ladies who's ever worked in comedy on TV. Yeah, she's, I mean, I've, I've said this so many times, but it's because it's so true. She's just, not only is she an incredibly talented comic actress, but she's just an incredible person. You know, like this, this business, I just hit myself with my thumb. Did you notice that? <laughs> um, but she's not only just super talented, but she's just a really, really kind, cool person. And as the lead of the show, typically the lead of the show can really set the tone for the show and just kind of everybody's attitude. And it's just such a team effort. She's a huge team player. She's funny. You know, it, it, nobody's walking on eggshells around her. There's no ego. The same with Armando Yanucci, who created the show. And so we all feel very, very fortunate to just be on there with her. Cause she's just, and also, also just to work across from her, it's like you ride that comic wave. Like you just have that trust that she's going to take the ball and she's going to be able to, she's going to throw the ball and I'm going to catch it. And you just kind of do that comic dance together. And it's just fun. Were you a big fan of hers on Seinfeld and her yeah. other projects back, back when we, I want to say when we were growing up, but that would be, that yeah. would be an insult to her. Exactly. Yeah. We were grown. Um, yes. I mean, always, it's one of those things where you watch, you know, when I was, living in New York, you know, doing commercials and things like that and very thankful for the work but hadn't gotten Arrested Development yet, I would see her on Seinfeld or other things and you'd see these actresses and be like, man, that would be fun to work with her one day. And then to have the opportunity is just a gift. What was the reaction among the cast and crew when she won that Emmy Award last oh, year for lead actress? It was so cool because I remember I was sitting next to Timothy um, Simons who plays Joan on the show. And um, we just, right when they called her name, we just shot up and started screaming because we all are just, we were so stoked. And, you know, just very supportive of each other. And it was just, it was that was a really exciting night. Very exciting. You know, it speaks to her longevity. That I believe, we, we follow all these awards religiously around here on our side. And yeah. I think she's only the second person ever to win uh, three Emmys as as regular cast member on three different shows. I know it's astonishing, and it's just a testament to her talent. Now your uh, character of Gary, uh, I love how he's always whispering to her. He's always he's yeah. like a a bee buzzing around her head all the time. Yeah. Yeah. What's it like just playing this particular character? Uh, Gary Walsh, you know, he's a guy who, you know, he started working with her in his probably late twenties. And typically in my job, in the job that Gary has, he's a, he's, a, he's a body man. So he's always with the politician that they're with. And typically people in their 20s do this job for two or three years and then they burn out. They're just, you know, tired of it because they have no social life, they have no life. Um, and then they move on to other stuff. Whereas Gary has been there into his 40s because he has no other, no other identity outside of her. And he just worships the ground that she walks on. So the thought of leaving her side is just, you know, that's just horrifying. So, I mean, he just pretty much worships the ground she walks on and is, I mean, his joy is to come to work and whisper in her ear. And she, of course, shouts insults and cusses at him all the time. And he doesn't hear, he just hears rainbows and unicorns and, you know, everything. He doesn't even hear it because he just absolutely is obsessed with her. From a physical side, I think this role is, is, is very tough. Um, probably from a blocking standpoint and moving around right. because you're constant. I mean, how do you not trip over each other all the time? You know, it's one of those things that when we first were doing it, cause you know, in, in this business, you get used to having your mark where you hit your mark. And so the angle, the camera can get you and the lighting and all that stuff. And there's really no marks in the show. Um, the cameras, we just, you just have no clue where the camera is going to be. Um, but it kind of, it was really weird to get used to, but then it just became exciting and fun and you just kind of, it be, kind of became like theater where you just kind of went with it. And then they just, they captured what they captured. And, and typically in a lot of shows, you know, if there's a joke, you'll kind of, sometimes the camera will scoot up to them to catch the joke. Whereas in this show, it's sometimes the camera will be on the side of someone's face or on their back when they're saying, you know, the, the, the button of the joke. It's just, it's, you just never know where it's going to be. And so you don't have to really play. So you're not really playing for the camera. You're just playing for the scene. And so it's, 
it was a challenge at first, but just so fun, so fun. Now the second season has just been finishing up on HBO. Um, if you you're on the Emmy ballot this year for Veep and Best yep. Supporting Actor, if you get nominated, as you know, you've got to choose one episode from this season. What do you think was the best Gary episode? Oh man, that's a good question. Um, I have to say, I loved the episode that just aired. It was the one where she walked through <laughs> the glass the glass door, and um, you know. A, that was horrifying for Gary because she's all cut up. And she, she, I remember she asks Matt, who, who plays um, Mike on the show, she says, does it look bad? And Mike's like, no, no. And she's all cut up. And he's, he's like, no, no, no. And she asks me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just have Gary has no filter because he's completely traumatized. But also he has these moments with Selena that, because she's kind of, this is a spoiler, but she's kind of doped up on St. John's wart. And so she really is friendly with Gary, which is his nirvana, and established this really intimate, and then she turns on him in the end. And so he's kind of on this really big emotional roller coaster the whole episode. So I'd, I'd say that probably, that ranked up high for me. That one ranks high. I asked Matt, too, uh, Matt Noble, one of our editors, and I were talking about uh, what you might submit. We do this on every chat. And the two that he thought, and I agree, uh, that you might also want to consider, one was Hostages. Uh, where you're where you're fighting with Dan all the time for her attention. Oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And the uh, the Vic Allen dinner. Um, where oh yeah. With, with Is your, that where I got a new uh, bag? The, the vice president's lunch. Yeah. Oh, that's where I got a new bag, right? Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was a big day for Gary. It was an, another horrifying day because she gave him, you know, as a kind gesture, she gave him a new bag, and that to 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 break away from his old bag was just like taking away a limb because he had sewn you know, probably like 40 or 50 pockets in that bag. And each pocket had like a specific category. And then the thought of a new bag, a smaller bag coming into his world was like, all right, this is traumatizing. Well, at the Emmy Awards last year, not only did Julia win, but for a first year show that had just aired a few episodes by the time the voters had their ballots, all of you together were up for best comedy series too. Yeah. Was uh, what was that night like, you know, just being able to celebrate together? Super. I mean, there's not. I mean, we, it was just surreal and fun. And we, the great thing, you know, many times as an actor, you do gigs that you're not necessarily, I mean, you do it for the work. Many times in my career, I've done it, you know, because you need the money and you do it for the work. But to be on a show that you really believe in, like Veep or Arrested Development, is just, it, it's something that's just, it really is just a gift. You know, so to be there and to be to really believe in it and be excited about it, and we had not been on air very long, and we had a blast doing it, so that was really fun to be a part of. Well, some shows fall through a sophomore slump, as you know, where maybe they, they ride the momentum from the first season or the yeah. producers come back and don't know exactly what to do the next season. Yeah. Uh, but, but Veep, I think, has gotten even more critical acclaim for the second mm -hmm. season. What was it about this uh, past few episodes mm -hmm. that you thought? I mean, I, I think it's really hit its stride this year. Oh, thanks for saying that. I really appreciate that. Um, you know, it's one of those things that, yeah, you hear about that sophomore slump, but I think there's also something to be said about you, you, you do that character more and you understand the relationships more and you understand the world more, so it becomes more organic for you. Um, and maybe it just, you know, gelled more or we kind of, we knew each other's strengths and just kind of played into that. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know how to, but I know that maybe it just, we just kind of got more comfortable. Now, we talked about Veep, uh, you submitting there on the Emmy ballot. Uh, yeah. You were also eligible for Arrested Development mm -hmm. in the same category. So yeah. we figured there must have been some strategy there behind picking one over the other. No, it was kind of out of my hands. But it, it, was, it was something that, yeah, I mean, it was totally out of my hands. But it was, honestly, I, I walk away from it just like, I'm, I feel, I mean, as an actor, you're, as I mentioned before, you're just thankful to get a gig that you like and to be a part of two shows that I'm a big fan of, I'm just incredibly grateful for that. And I, I'm proud of them both, definitely. Well, our chat room is open and I want to ask you a question along those lines. Yeah. Of course, both Arrested and Veep could be up for best comedy series. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what do you hope would win if they both are up? What what would you say? What was the question? Which show would you hope would win Best Comedy Series oh. if both are nominated? I'm not going to answer that. I don't know because <laughs> I mean I, I 
you know, I mean, again, it's one of those things, and this isn't just me kind of giving a politically correct answer. This is, I genuinely mean this, that I, I love them both. I mean, I, I, I believe in them both. They're also completely different shows um, with totally different tones and styles. And I just, I love them both. So that, that's a really, that's a really hard choice. Oh, listen, we had a worse choice this morning. Uh, Daniel was interviewing Hugh Dancy, who's on Hannibal. Oh, yeah. And he asked him toward the end, you know, he's married to Claire Danes. Oh, he right. said, yeah. um, He said to uh, Hugh, uh, now, if you're up against Damian Lewis from Homeland <laughs> in the drama series category, who does Claire root for, you or Damian? So, <laughs> oh, man. How was his answer? Was it okay? Um, hopefully, he stayed, hopefully he stayed true to his... Um, well, Damien won last year, so I think it was more like it's going to be Hugh's turn this time. So, <laughs> now, that, that question was from Marcus Dixon, by the way, about the uh, comedy series. Oh, Always like Marcus. Give credit. Um, Marcus. Uh, D Diva Nadal, I guess that's how you say this name, wants to know what was it like coming back on set of Arrested Development after seven years away? Oh, man. It was, um, you know, it, it, we say this word, word so many times because it's how we define it. It was just surreal. You know, I mean, when you when you do a show and it gets canceled, you kind of have a, a mental going away party where you're just kind of like, you know what, I'm not going to be able to do that character again. It was a blast. And you kind of mourn that time where you're like, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to jump into that character again, but it was a great time. And then you move on to step into a character that you did seven years ago when you never get that opportunity. So it was just that. It was very surreal. We were, they had completely, there was, my first day was the first day when the entire cast was there. So we were, they had recreated the penthouse detail by detail and we're all just sitting around in our costumes. I mean, it just, it felt like a time warp. So it was a huge honor to be there. And I mean, this is, and this is another, not just another cush answer, but it's true. The only reason we were back was because of the support from the fans and the press. That was it. It had nothing to do with anything else. It was purely that, the momentum that they carried throughout the years. So we were all very grateful. We talked to the creator of the show uh, and the producer of the show, Mitch Hurwitz, oh, yeah. uh, uh, about 10 days ago and asked mm -hmm. him about, it's one of those cult shows, almost because it was canceled after three years and because of DVDs and streaming and and probably people letting other people borrow their DVDs. It's gotten more acclaim and more fans in the six years it was off than when it was on. Yeah, it really did. I mean, it's, and because most of my friends that have mentioned that they're fans of the show found out about it through the DVD, found out about it through passing around the DVDs and um, Netflix and all that. So again, it was just simply that momentum that got us back. This episode that featured you a uh, great deal, uh, where you're basically the lead of the episode, was Off the Hook. Oh, yeah. It was the next to last episode of the season. And, and Mitch and Troy thought so much of that one. Of course, they directed every episode. So yeah. because of that, they could only submit one episode for the season as directors on the Emmy ballot. And they chose yours. Oh, uh, and he said it was because uh, the physical comedy, uh, the way it was structured, uh, just everything about it was just, you know, they thought it was just perfect. So mm. what did you think about that script when you first saw Off the Hook? You know, I, it's uh, how I thought about that script was how I thought about every script that I ever, every episode I've done in Arrested. It was one of those things where you couldn't wait to see what surprises were coming. You know, it was like, wait, I'm doing what? Wait, wait, my hand's being eaten. What? My hand's going to be eaten off? Wait, what? I mean, it's just you were, you, you got ready for something was about to happen and with my with my episode on this season, you know, a little bit of a spoiler, but something obviously happens. I get a new a new thing on my hand, and just all you know, my girlfriend Liza comes back, and you're just getting ready for a bit. You're gonna take a big ride, and it was it's just exciting. I mean, it was it was when I read it, it was just fun to see because that's the thing with these writers they they're not afraid to think completely out of the box and take complete risks. So you knew that something was going to happen and it did. What did, what did you do to get back in the framework, the mind, the, the mind framework of Buster? Um, Will and Jason said that they had to go back and watch some earlier episodes just to, yeah. to, to refresh their memories. I watched a couple episodes. I didn't watch that many, um, I, but I did watch a few. 
mainly, honestly, what made it click in for me was when I was that first day when I was back with everybody. Um, because I was a little, you know, you're, you're kind of hesitant. You're kind of thinking, can you can you match that expectation? But when I kind of heard everybody talking, and specifically the woman who played uh, Lucille, my mother, on the show, when I heard her voice, it just it was like Pavlovian, and it just it just clicked right back in that incredibly needy, dysfunctional, disturbing relationship. It just kind of it was just kind of it was like riding a bike again. Hmm. I want to ask you about Jessica Walter. Um, you've had a lot of great scenes yeah. over the years, and in that particular episode, uh, Off the Hook, of course, you did as well. What's it like working with her? She's phenomenal. <laughs> she's uh, she's like a Julia Louis Dreyfus, where she uh, is so gifted in comic timing, and you just trust that she nails it every single time. Um, you know, she's a Jessica. Is a big. She's in a lot of theater, so she's a big theater actress, and she brings, you know, I remember on her script, like she had them all, each page marked, and, you know, all of her notes, and she was very, very specific about things, but it just, it just came, it was just, I had huge respect for her, and I, I, I think, man, just watching her, and some of her lines, what's, one of her, fa one of her famous lines that she said in the show is, um, when she was in some some restaurant, she says, I do not understand, like some waiter asked her really just a simple question about the menu, and she says, I don't understand the question, and I will not respond to it. <laughs> but it was just so perfect for her, you know. Anyways, I love her. With her theater background, it was so great on her episode, Queen Bee, to see her get to, to be part of that Broadway musical oh, yeah. and sing and dance. Definitely, definitely. And to see her and Tommy Toon and Liza, I mean, it was just, it was totally just like, Old school Broadway. A um, couple more Arrested questions, and we'll jump back to Veep. We've asked everybody on, on Arrested, uh, Mitch included, about that, that first year at the Emmy Awards, winning for Best Comedy Series, mm -hmm. and we want to get your reaction to that particular night as well. Yeah, I mean, I can – it was, again, because um, was it 2000 – wait. 2004. Four, four yeah. Um, you know, we'd only been on a season, and you have you really check your expectations at the door when you walk into something like that because you have no expectation that we're going to win because we were so brand new. And also, it was a very different style of a show. Um, so we kind of came in like, we'll see, you know, but let's just have a good time and, you know, whatever. And then when they called our name, it's just one of those, I'll never forget it. Like, again, we just jumped up, and it was just, <laughs> it was just like – rushing towards the football field like it was just this awesome energy and even standing on stage we were like what the hell what the hell are we doing up here you know so it was it was pretty awesome yeah it's amazing for a first year show to have that kind of honor yeah it was um back to veep for a moment somebody let's uh, see awardzilla in our uh, chat room awardzilla what, how terrible awardzilla what do you enjoy most about playing gary on veep and what's the most challenging part what do I enjoy most? Um, definitely the cast and working with Armanda, who's the creator. Because um, the thing with, with the thing with Veep is you kind of come together. They we have a, like two or three weeks of rehearsal before we start shooting, which is very rare for television. And they start with a start with a script, and then it just kind of morphs through improv and us kind of throwing bits out. It just kind of morphs into what it becomes. So that is incredible to be a part of that process. And also just we all get along and it's just we go out and it's just it's super fun. The hardest part and most challenging, I would say, is we shoot uh, in Baltimore. So it's really tough to be away from home for, um, you know, four, three or four months. So we, we travel back and forth. But I would say that's definitely the most challenging. Definitely. When we talked to Mitch uh, about Arrested, I believe, were you shooting Veep or, or deep into production on Veep when they were doing Arrested? Because he said you were the hardest one to get scheduled in. Yeah, it was challenging because we, um, we started in, they started in August and they had already kind of mapped out a lot of the episodes and stuff. So we started um, in August and then I started shooting Veep in October, I believe. Um, and then I would kind of come back and forth a couple of times. So it was really, it was tough, but you know, what I was able to do and what they gave me, I was very, very, very grateful for it. I know I, I saw, you know, reactions after the, everybody watched it on Netflix and things in our forums about, I wonder why Tony wasn't there as much as some of the others. And, and I believe that kind of explained it back to people was 
you certainly would have been if you could have been, but it, uh, you weren't as available as some. Yeah, it was. It was. It was definitely challenging. It was definitely challenging. But I mean, what they gave me in my episode was so fun. So that was that was that was great. You had one of the two, uh, maybe the the single best, or at least in the top two episodes of the whole season. No, oh, that's so nice to say. I mean, I'm I I I was not a binge watcher, so I kind of I kind of. Uh, space them out a little bit when I was watching with my wife because too much, too much, too soon. I was just like, oh, I can't absorb that much. So I, it was really fun to kind of follow that puzzle because it really was like a big puzzle. And you know, Mitch was just this little mad scientist in the editing room with all the material and kind of figuring out the puzzle and just to kind of see how he traced it and callbacks and all that stuff. Matt Noble, one of our editors, uh, it's really, really early in the morning there in, uh, in Australia, and he's joining us for a couple hey, of questions here at the end. Matt, what, what do you want to hey, know? Hey, Tony. How are you? Um, yeah, I, yeah, very well, thanks. Sorry, I think I had the wrong time down for the chat, so I started Wait, a bit late. What is it like? It's but, like 2 a.m. your time? Yeah, very good, Tony. <laughs> very oh, gosh. Good. Dude, um, thank you for joining us. No worries. Um, I guess you're talking about this big puzzle that Arrested Development Season 4 was in putting together. And in some ways, I think some of the reviews were maybe a bit unfair in judging it before getting a chance to watch all of those episodes. Yeah. Uh, for you as an actor, was it uh, was it quite? Did you have to put a lot of faith in Mitch because it really isn't until you see all those fifteen episodes play out that all yeah. the pieces fit together and you understand the the genius of it? Because it was a bit of a slog to watch through, but it was more yeah. rewarding within each episode. You know what? You know what made it easier is having worked with Mitch for the first three seasons. We all had complete faith in him that it was going to work out. I think if it was the fir very first time we had worked with him, we would have been like, "What?" Because we didn't. <clears throat> you know, I'd get something, and and you know, we would all talk about this. Like we had no idea what was going on in each other's episodes because the, it was just so sometimes very very confusing. So he would be like, "Okay, you're going to go here, and then you're going to hold, you're going to slap him with the hand, and he's going to pass." I mean, you're just like okay, okay, and you just had that trust that it was going to work out, and it did because you knew it did. And it's, it's kind of like, I mean, I, I'm not at all comparing ourselves to, to this movie, but I remember watching um, Moulin Rouge a long time ago and thinking, wow, those actors really had to trust Boz Lerman because, you know, all of a sudden they're like, okay, you're going to be singing on top of a roof, you're going to be talking to like a green little fairy, and then like you're going to, this thing's going to come, and they'll just be like, all right, I, I guess I guess it's gonna be okay, and it turned out great. But you you just kind of have to trust that that creator and director knows what he's doing, and we have complete faith in Mitch. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, ask one more, and then we're gonna have to let Tony go. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, I guess um, I guess uh, t talking about uh, I guess with uh, Veep, uh, maybe just going back to that and yeah. uh, what you do on that show, uh, sort of compared to Rest of Development, was a light work with Armando Inanucci. And I guess um, I, I was speaking to some of the other guys um, from that show. Apparently, there's quite a bit of improv on set. And uh, how much improv do you get to do? You know, we get to do a lot of improv. It's one of the things um, that we, I was saying before that we had about two or three weeks. We have about two or three weeks of rehearsal time before we start. So it really allows us that time to play with the script and kind of. And the great thing about these these creators and writers is. They don't. They they are so open to whatever changes happen. Like they all just kind of want the best product, so they're very open to ideas. It's a everybody's a team player. Um, and, but I once, however, once after we are then we improv a little bit when we're shooting. But once after that rehearsal, the script is kind of locked. And then after that, we can play on 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 um, set and stuff. But for the most part, we don't have a lot of time. So there's not a lot of kind of creating and. Improv, there is improv on set, but it's not to the extent that there is in rehearsals, which is really fun because they allow that playground in rehearsal to really explore and kind of see where it can go. And he's well, just Tony, a good guy. Thank you so much for your time today. We, you we love watching you on so many different projects, but especially Veep and Arrested Development. And hope well, you're having a great summer vacation. And good luck with the Emmys in a few weeks. Thanks so much, guys. I appreciate you taking the time and waking up at 2 a.m. and Spending the time of your time in Mississippi. Thanks so much. Matt would have woken Thanks, up any time to talk to you because oh, he loves both yes. shows. All right. Well, you guys have a good rest of the summer. You too. Thanks so much. Yeah, okay. You too, Bye. Bye.